Hey everyone, today I'm going to be trying out GitHub Copilot. This is a tool provided by GitHub, which is a Visual Studio Code extension providing autocomplete whenever you're writing your code. So it's currently in this kind of technical preview stage and you can actually sign up to get access to try it out. And once you've done that, you will be able to install this uh, extension in Visual, in Visual Studio Code, uh, which will provide this autocomplete functionality. So just quickly to show you, um, if we provide this definition of a function called add numbers, and it kind of seems to know what we want it to do there. If we give something a little bit more abstract, we can say difference. Um, and here it's able to know that, it, that we want to know the difference between these numbers. So I've seen some people kind of try out these examples given on the website and play around with that but I thought I'd do something a little bit more interesting. I thought I'd try to put GitHub Copilot against a couple of different lead code questions. So I did try out some lead code questions before and there were some interesting ones that I'm gonna show you now. And then we can also go over some new ones that I haven't seen before. So first of all, uh, there's one here called palindrome number. And this is a problem where if we're given an integer, we need to return true if it's a palindrome integer. So first of all, an integer is a palindrome when it reads the same backwards as it does forward. So one, two, one is a palindrome, while one, two, three is not. So let's just see if GitHub Copilot is able to understand what we want here. So let's say is palindrome like that. And we seem to just get this example which just says good luck, which isn't very interesting. Let's give it a little bit more. We might just say number. And in this case, this seems to be a solution which would actually work. So we can see it's first of all, we're gonna convert the number to a string. It's going to reverse the string and then it's gonna compare if the reverse string is the same as the original string. So let's just paste this in and see if it actually works. So if we run the code, we can see here that it actually was able to successfully complete that challenge. So in this case, GitHub Copilot bet the lead code. So let's look at a couple of other problems and see if we're able to solve them. So another one that I thought was quite interesting is this integer to Roman. And this is interesting because it requires a GitHub Copilot to understand what a Roman numeral is and kind of understand what's happening here which is, is quite interesting. So let's see. So basically here, uh, we know what a Roman numeral is. Uh, there's these seven diff different symbols which represent numbers. And we want to create a function here which will convert an integer to a Roman numeral. So given an integer, we want to return the Roman numeral representation of that. So let's um, be really verbose with our function name in here to give uh, Copilot exactly what we want. That's one thing that I noticed. If you can get Copilot to understand what you want, it is actually quite good at coming up with solutions. So let's just say convert integer to Roman numeral. So here if we say we're passing an integer, uh, in this case it, it doesn't seem to be giving us a complete solution. So we can click here to open GitHub Copilot and then we get kind of multiple different solutions here and we can, we can look through those. So first of all here, this seems to be quite a complete solution. So it's given us the conversions here of Roman numerals uh, to values, which seems to correspond with, with what we're given here in the lead code question then it is, seems to be kind of uh, converting this to a Roman numeral string, which is kind of what we want. We can click here, accept solution, and this is gonna bring that solution into our editor here. So let's just copy the contents of this here. And if we paste it in, and we run the code, 
we can see here that for the simple case, it was able to solve that. Let's see. And it was actually able to solve it here for, for all of the cases. So these are two different leak code questions that I thought were interesting. We can go over some ones now that I haven't looked at before to see. But just to kind of understand here, I have um, heard that Copilot uses some sort of training data to train itself. So it's possible that this code here, which it found, is actually a solution coming straight from somewhere like um, GitHub from source code. But I also saw somewhere else that something like 0.1% of uh, the kind of the suggestions that Copilot gives are actually full solutions from other sources. So it is supposed to actually generate solutions itself um, somehow, which just seems absolutely crazy. So there's one here which seems pretty crazy called Valid Sudoku. So I'm very curious whether GitHub Copilot is able to, to do this because in order to do this, it would need to understand, first of all, what a Sudoku is. So we want to determine if a nine by nine Sudoku board is valid. Only the filled cells need to be validated according to the following rules. So let's see if it's able to understand here uh, what is going on. So first of all, I think it might make sense to give Copilot the actual input here. So I don't know whether this would actually help it, but we could say something like const board equals to this, just to show Copilot what it's actually going to expect. I don't know whether it would actually use this, um, but let's, let's see. So we want to validate whether it's a valid Sudoku board. So let's say function is valid Sudoku board. And if we want to pass in a board here, let's see. Well, so it it's given us something here. Let's open the copilot and see if there's a, a full solution. So is valid number. So it's interesting that some of these seem to use uh, other functions which aren't actually given as well as the solution. So this wouldn't be a complete solution here. Uh, this here seems to be some kind of a, a complete solution. So let's, let's try one of these. Let's see this one here. I'm not going to go through exactly what it's doing because it seems quite complicated. Um, Let's give it our input here and see, see if it's able to do that. So let's just do console.log is valid Sudoku board. And it seems to, it seems to know that I'm going to be calling uh, this function using the board, which I defined above. So if I do that, I'm going to run node and my file. So it's saying that this is a valid Sudoku board. In the question, I wonder, was it? So it says true, yeah. So it looks like this function is accepting the kind of data structure which we want, which is this uh, 2D array with each row. So let's see whether it's actually going to work. Oops. So if we copy this and paste it in, run the code. So yeah, it was able to, to solve that for one example. Let's see the other test cases. And it did, that is that is pretty cool because this is definitely not a trivial problem to solve. I mean, if I was to solve this myself, it would it would take some time um, and probably some, uh, some looks on Stack Overflow and things, which kind of uh, leads me to where this would be useful. Obviously, GitHub Copilot isn't going to be able to design a full application end-to-end -end or anything like that yet. Um, but where I can see this being useful is with these kind of, if you're writing a module or a simple function uh, like this, then it definitely would be useful. You would obviously need to run some test cases against that to see that what it's producing is actually correct. I think it's also important to that people try to understand what it's producing. If you're new to programming, you might think, oh, I can just use GitHub Copilot for everything. But I think that would be a little bit of a trap to fall into because it's very important that you understand the fundamentals 
of what's going on here. Um, but yeah, it's, it definitely seems useful and could could save some people um, time in the future. So that's that's cool. Let's let's have a look at some other problems here and see if we can if we can find any interesting ones. Uh, so container with most water. So honestly, uh, looking at this question, it's quite long drawn out. I have seen people do something interesting, which is just copy the entire question and paste that as a comment. Um, so let's see whether anything like this works. Oops. So if we just paste the entire thing in, and we go down here, does Copilot actually uh, suggest anything? It doesn't seem to. So let's just say function uh, container. What happened there? All oh, right. Whoa. So I put this comment above, and it seems to be now actually generating a solution. So is it? I'm very curious whether it's actually reading and understanding what's going on here, or if it has just seen this um, somewhere else in some source code, and it's then able to just copy the, the function. But that was that was a little bit freaky, the way it did that. So let's see if it actually works. That is, that's a little bit freaky. So in this case, I didn't even read the question. I didn't even try to understand what it was asking. I just gave GitHub Copilot the entire question in a comment and it was able to generate this function, which is, is absolutely crazy. It seems to have some trouble with a time limit. Um, but yeah, that's, that's cool. I guess it doesn't seem like the, probably the most efficient solution. Uh, given that there is a for loop inside another for loop, but that is still very impressive that for it was able to solve for this case. So at this point, I think um, that GitHub Copilot is, seems to be beaten lead code. It's definitely um, beaten me anyway. I wouldn't have been able to solve that that quickly. Let's try one more and see. So back to one that we can kind of quickly understand ourselves. I'm guessing this add binary uh, question wants us to provide two strings um, as binary numbers, and we want to output uh, their sum. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. So let's just uh, try to define this in a function name. One thing I like about doing it this way is it means that you're kind of naming your functions very uh, declarative things so it's very clear what they're actually doing so if I was to say here I would do add uh, two binary numbers and if I was to give string one and string two so I don't seem to get anything here initially so let's open the copilot and see So add two binary numbers. Looks like um, looks like what this first one is doing should actually be correct. Again, we're not going to go too much into the details about how it's doing it, but more just whether it works. So let's see. Uh, add two binary numbers, and here straight away it's it's kind of given a suggestion of some binary numbers to to give. So that's that's cool. So one one would be three, and one would be one. So the output here. Uh, should be four. So let's console.log that. So running this, we can see it's 100. All right, so I didn't actually understand. Oh, so it's um, return the sum as a binary string. So uh, 100 zero zero would be four. So we're returning the output as binary as well. So here, um, GitHub Copilot actually understood the question uh, more so than me copy the internals here and I'm going to rename this str1 and this str2 
uh, to run this code to see whether it works. Cool, so it worked on the example which we ran and it also worked here. So that's cool. I think this has been very interesting for me anyway, uh, just to see how GitHub Copilot performs and how it can kind of appear to have some sort of an understanding of what you want it to do. As I mentioned before, I don't know whether it's really practical to use this in everyday work yet, um, but I can see how it, it could be useful in some ways as well. For example, if you for some reason need to have a function that would convert um, an integer to Roman numerals or vice versa, that's something that could take some time. You would probably end up in the working world going to Stack Overflow, seeing how different people do it. But having all this functionality inside the editor is is definitely useful. Um, it obviously isn't going to be able to write an entire application yet, so I think our jobs are safe for a little while, at least. But it's it's definitely interesting to see what direction this goes. At the very least, it's a nice plugin to have in your IDE to be able to, to do everything from there and not need to go to Stack Overflow so much. But as I said, it's also important that people new to engineering and to software understand exactly what it's doing. And it doesn't just become this thing where um, you kind of blindly follow exactly what it's, what it's producing. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you're interested, I would definitely go ahead uh, and sign up for the technical preview and try it out.